James C., Collins, How the Mighty Fall, and Why Some Companies Never Give In, Good to Great, 4. Embark on a journey through the captivating world of business decline, as explored in James C. Collins' book, How the Mighty Fall, and Why Some Companies Never Give In, Learn the Pitfalls Large Organizations Face, The Dangers of Overconfidence, and the Risks of Rapid Growth. This book summary will discuss why successful companies fail and reveal the importance of the right mindset in leadership. Uncover the critical factors that can make or break an enterprise, and gain valuable insights into addressing decline, managing risks and avoiding culprits for corporate collapse. The Inevitable Collapse of Large Organizations the rise and fall of the Roman Empire serves as a stark reminder that even the most powerful and vast organizations are at risk of collapsing. The reason for such decline is always self-inflicted, the direct result of mismanagement, rather than external forces or bad luck. Nokia's failure to maintain its market leadership position is a prime example of this. Instead of innovating in the smartphone technology space, Nokia's management chose to focus on less profitable areas. On the other hand, even successful firms sometimes collapse due to acting in the wrong ways, as was the case with Bank of America in the 1980s. They implemented innovative practices and closed unprofitable branches, yet incurred some of the most significant losses in banking history. It is a cautionary tale for all organizations that they must adapt and evolve in line with emerging trends, or face the risk of collapse. Succumbing to Hubris This book excerpt examines how excessive confidence can lead to the downfall of successful companies, citing examples such as Motorola and Circuit City. The author compares this phenomenon to the Greek tragedy, where heroes fail because of their hubris. Motorola's overconfidence led to the failure of their StarTac cell phone, and their market share dropped drastically. Circuit City neglected their core business while investing in other ventures, leading to their eventual demise. The author warns against the dangers of companies losing focus on what led to their success in the first place and branching out too much. The message of this excerpt is clear, companies must remain humble and stay focused on their primary business to avoid succumbing to hubris. The Pitfalls of Overinnovation and Fast Growth in Successful Companies Successful companies can fail due to overinnovation and expeditious growth. High levels of innovation can lead to an unsustainable push for new products that disrupts good business practices, like maintaining low costs and selling to profitable markets. Rubbermaid, a once popular household manufacturer, failed due to overinnovation with its strategy of introducing a new product to their range per day creating nearly 1,000 new products in three years. Their lack of discipline led to a decline in quality and eventual takeover by a rival company. Similarly, rooted in pressure to please shareholders for fast profits, some publicly listed companies focus on rapid growth. Banks prior to the 2008 financial crisis borrowed heavily, invested in risky but rewarding products, and ignored costs. While this strategy brought short-term success, it left them at greater risk in the long term. Some encountered major losses, and others went bankrupt when the system collapsed. Ignoring Valid Criticisms Motorola's failure in the cell phone market due to ignoring valid criticisms is an example of how companies fail to deal with bad news. As they focused on developing a satellite phone named Iridium, the quality and cost of normal cell phones grew. Instead of heeding the criticisms, Motorola put on their rose-colored glasses and continued with the project. When the Iridium was released, it was pricier and lower in quality than the competition, leading to its eventual failure. The project cost Motorola $2 billion, which could have been salvaged had they stopped it when they had the chance. Companies also fail to deal with bad news by blaming their own failures on outside factors, rather than using it constructively. To avoid such mistakes, firms need to use criticisms in a practical way and be open to accepting their mistakes to move forward. The Danger of Seeking a Silver Bullet Solution When a business is in crisis, the natural response for many leaders is to panic and search for a silver bullet, a one-size-fits-all solution to solve all problems. 
However, this approach rarely leads to a successful turnaround. Companies often attempt to implement sweeping changes, such as adopting new untested technology or completely changing their business culture, but these efforts only provide a short-lived boost, if any. Taking the example of Hewlett Packard, HP, in the 1990s, replacing the CEO with a flashy media-savvy figure and updating the company's image failed to reverse the decline and resulted in the loss of drive and focus. A more drastic solution is to give up, as exemplified by Scott Paper, who ultimately sold their remaining assets to a competitor after futile attempts to stop the rot. Instead of seeking a silver bullet solution, companies should take a more measured and adaptable approach to problem solving to avoid making rushed decisions that can deepen the crisis. The successful Leadership Attitude The success of any leader comes down to having the right attitude in making decisions. The first step is admitting that luck played a part in their success, which keeps them from becoming arrogant. The second step is to accept that there's always more room to learn. The most successful leaders are lifelong learners. Lastly, they must avoid hubris and remember where they came from. They can only stop their company from overreaching if they stay focused on their core business. By following these steps, leaders can make better decisions and ensure that their businesses thrive. Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, serves as an example of a leader who was always willing to learn. Taking Risks how to navigate business strategy. Taking risks is essential for business growth, but choosing the right ones is critical. While adopting risky strategies is okay, it is crucial to consider the potential consequences of failure. The waterline principle is a helpful tool to determine which risks are worth taking and the damage that is reparable. Taking small manageable risks, instead of big sweeping changes, can lead to business stability and focus. HP's new CEO made extensive changes to its culture and image, resulting in stuttering performance, showcasing the need to prioritize business discipline. Remember, taking a risk that can harm the company is not worth it. Bouncing back from business failure. When faced with a seemingly insurmountable challenge, it's easy to give up. This holds true for companies experiencing difficulties as well. However, Businesses can turn things around and become successful again with the right attitude and lots of hard work. Winston Churchill proved that one can triumph despite all the odds. Bouncing back from failure doesn't only depend on the right attitude but also taking the necessary actions. And Mulcahy, Xerox's CEO, left no stone unturned in rebuilding the ailing company, working tirelessly until it became profitable again in just five years. As we've seen in How the Mighty Fall, the cause of collapse for large organizations is often mismanagement, overconfidence and rapid growth. Successful companies face the danger of excessive innovation, failing to maintain good business practices and branch out into uncharted territories. Leadership plays an essential role in overcoming decline, with learning-oriented and humble leaders more likely to succeed. Businesses must find a balance between taking calculated risks and avoiding sweeping changes that jeopardize their core foundation. By understanding the potential challenges faced by companies, we can apply the lessons learned and avert the dreaded fall from grace.